He's Dean Blandino, the NFL Vice President of Officiating, and he joins us on the show. How are you, Dean? I'm doing okay, Dan. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm doing spectacular. Do you like this part of the job, doing interviews? I, I actually do. I like, I like doing this anytime we can have a dialogue and, and maybe educate. I, I think that's a big part of what I do, so I do like it. How would you rate this season? Well, we do a we do a mid season review with all of our game officials. I like to look at the whole body of work. I, we certainly have room for improvement. I don't think we're um, any any better or worse than where we've been the last couple of years. Uh, so, but I do like to wait till the end of the season to to look at the whole body of work. Um, so right now we've got room for improvement. There's no question. Why is there so much scrutiny that goes along with the officiating? Great question. There, there seems to be more attention and focus on officiating than ever before. And I've been a part of it for 21 years with NFL officiating, and I've seen a lot of different situations come up, but I, but I haven't seen this much scrutiny. And, and I don't know if that's just the, the culture and the environment that we're in today, and there's more, there's more outlets for people to have an opinion and, and to um, communicate that opinion. But I think it's, it just goes to show that, that people love the NFL and they love everything about the NFL and they debate a lot of things about the NFL and officiating is part of that. But is this good for the league? Well, I think it's interest is always good. I'm, I'm not sure when people disparage the officiating, that's certainly not good for the league. And, uh, and so we understand our role in, in making sure that the game is played fairly and officiated consistently. And uh, when we do make mistakes, that's, that's not good for the league. I don't feel we're making any more mistakes than have been made in the past, but we have made uh, some mistakes in some high-profile situations. And, and we own that. And we have to make sure that, that we prevent those from happening again, and, and that's why we, we go through the process we do on a, on a weekly basis to review, evaluate, and then train. What is the value in if, if I feel like I got screwed on a call? Let's say I'm John Harbaugh, the face mask penalty against Jacksonville, and I say, look, look you made a mistake here. You cost me a job or you cost me a win here. I, there's no recourse there. Is there ever a situation where, where the NFL would say, we're going to award this victory to the team that got, got jobbed? I, I have never – I have not seen that in my experience. There's certainly uh, things in place where, where teams – could protest a game or protest a ruling, but that, that has not been um, very frequent in my experience. I think we do have that dialogue with the coaches, and it's nothing, nothing I tell a coach on Monday morning is going to change what yeah. happened on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, that's the reality of it, but there's certainly things that dialogue is important because if it is a call that was made that shouldn't have been made, then they can go back to that player and tell that player, that that technique was legal and you can continue to use that. So there is value there going forward, but certainly going, going into the past, that's obviously not something that we can, we can correct. Explain this to me. You had uh, Pete Morelli's crew punished. They did the Niners-Cardinals game, and then they were pulled from the Sunday night Colts-Steelers game, but then they're going to call the Patriots-Eagles game? Is that, is that what's happening? Well, we, we put our officials, we try to put our crews in the best position to, to be successful. And so, yeah, it's been out there that they were, they were pulled from the primetime game and they're going to work the Eagles-Patriots game. And we just look at, we have 17 crews and we have up to 16 games a weekend and we want to put our crews in the best position to be successful. And ultimately with looking at a lot of different factors, this is what we felt was going to, was going to allow us to be um, as best as, as most um, as successful as possible in those two games. But they were demoted, right? Well, there's no, there's no demotion. This wasn't a disciplinary thing because every game is, is equally important the reality is, is that the primetime games are there's more focus and attention on those. And that that's we, there's no way around that. Uh, but every game is equally important. There's there's playoffs involved. There's jobs on the line, and we look at every game the same way. And we want to be as consistent as possible for every game. Well, 
I'm going to read into that that you're you're kind of uh, shifting or hiding uh, an officiating staff that's not as good as the one you're going to put into the Sunday night game, Cold Steelers. Is that fair? No, to- I, I. I mean that that's that's fair for you to to read into it that way. That's not why we made that decision. Uh, we're looking at we're looking at both crews. We're looking at the makeup and the games that that. Uh, are are before them and try again trying to put them in the best position to be successful, and uh, and that's what we felt the way um, to make that change. Dean, this is more complicated than what's a catch. <laughs> Good segue. <laughs> Why am I still bothered by what is a catch? Have you guys tried to simplify this to make it easier, and then in the process you made it more complicated? It's it's a great question, and there there's no. There's no doubt that, that there has been debate about what is a catch and what isn't a catch. And, and I've said this before, and, I, and I'll say it again. Look, we have thousands of plays every weekend, and we have a lot of catches and a lot of incomplete passes, and there's no issue on the overwhelming majority of those plays. And we're talking about a, a small minority, a small group of plays, and we're debating the subjective element of the rule. And there's no way around it. There's a subjective element to this rule. And, and the subjective element in the upright receiver is time. It's control plus two feet plus time. Well, how long does he have to have it in order for it to be a catch? Now, that's the rule. It's been defined as becoming a runner. What, what does that mean? How do, you, how do you quantify that? And that's the subjective element that we're debating on six or seven plays this year. And... The competition committee has really studied this, and they're very, they're very cognizant of not changing rules to fix one play, and they ha- always have to look at the unintended consequences. And also, can this rule be officiated consistently? When we talk about the receiver that goes to the ground, the key is hold on to the ball when you land. That's a bright line, and that's something that can be officiated consistently. It's not perfect, and we are going to have plays where it looks like a catch, it feels like a catch, but our rule says it isn't a catch. And But that is a small group, a small minority of plays. Why do I care what the receiver does out of bounds? I, if I, you caught it two feet in bounds, that's a catch. That's a catch. I don't care what Santonio Holmes would do after the catch in the Super Bowl. He caught it two feet in bounds, and that's it. And I couldn't care about there, time. There, there's a lot of people that agree with you. Um, there's a there's. It certainly would be a bright line if you just said control in two feet, but we have to look at. Does that lead to more fumbles? Does that does that lead to defenders uh, attempting to hit that receiver at the sideline, trying to strip that ball out? Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of a lot of factors involved. I don't disagree with you that two feet control. It is a bright line. The rule currently says that you have to have that third element, that element of time. That's what we're trying to officiate, mm-hmm. and that's what we're trying to um, administer consistently in replay. And believe me, it will be discussed as it's been for the last 10 years, catch, no catch, and probably prior to that, because we certainly want to make sure that everyone understands the rule, officials, coaches, players, the fans, the media. Uh, it's important to us. Ever consider going to the college rule? One foot? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it has been discussed. I think the, the, over, the overall feeling is that our, our athletes are better, um, our game is faster, the two feet separates the NFL from college, um, and it's a, more, it's a more skilled play. I think that seems to be the, the overwhelming feeling amongst the membership to, to staying with two feet. Yeah, but my problem with that is I go back to Des Bryant's catch against Green Bay, and we know it was a catch, but he was punished for being athletic that he took three steps and was trying to score a touchdown and he got punished for it penalized for it they lose the ball and you have to factor in the athleticism of these guys that they do things um and sometimes that that uh they're punished for it and again a, an unbelievably athletic play and and we certainly don't want to punish players for being athletic we want to celebrate that athleticism i think it also it just goes back to the the consistency of officiating that play. And, and the Des Bryant play is a, is a great exercise in, in where do you draw the line? Where, where does it become a catch? And then how do you apply that line to all of the other thousands of plays that we're going to have to look at? And I think that's, 
Dez was one play. It was an unbelievable play. Uh, but, again, it goes back to the consistency of the rule, and I do think, uh, quite frankly, we're going we're gonna to sacrifice a small group of, of plays that everybody thinks are catches for the overall good and the overall consistency of, uh, of officiating. Uh, how did you react when you saw Animal House playing in the command center at uh, NFL Replay? You know, I didn't – someone told me about that. I haven't, I haven't seen it yet, but someone told me about that, and uh, – you know, so I, I really don't know what happened there. Now that it was, is, yeah, and that was the, I believe that was the NBA command center. Oh, was it? From what, from what I, oh, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't the NFL command center. No. Oh, you guys had Caddyshack on. <laughs> I do like <laughs> Animal House, but we don't, we don't play, we don't play anything other than football in our command. Center. Good, that's that's good to hear. Uh, Dean, thank you for joining us as always. One of these days, we'll just talk positives when you come on. Is that possible? <laughs> I'd love that. I would love that. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. Okay, Dan. That's uh, Dean Blandino, the uh, vice president of uh, NFL officials.